What is up everybody? This is Michael File Sage checking in here today. I hope you guys are doing well. So today I wanted to talk about the Instant Pot. And the Instant Pot is an electric pressure cooker slash slow cooker. You could do all sorts of stuff as you can see, but we won't get into that because that's not important for our purposes. All we care about is the pressure cook setting and the keep warm setting. And I have been using the Instant Pot pretty much exclusively for the last three years. I bought this thing in 2019, I believe. And ever since then, I stopped using pressure cookers, regular traditional pressure cookers, and I have basically stuck exclusively to the Instant Pot. And that's for a number of reasons. The, the, the main reason basically is that it, I love its small form factor right and i love the fact that i don't have to babysit it because although it's a pressure cooker it's not going to be releasing pressure throughout the run right it's actually closer to a sterilizer in the sense that it won't release any steam while you're cooking it so even if you put just a little amount of water in there you could do a run for 12 hours and you could leave the house you know you could go run errands and stuff and no problem now obviously you don't there's no real reason to be doing it for 12 hours it's a, it's a bit overkill to say the least but you can do that if you want to. And even if I'm gonna do a regular green run, I don't need to babysit it. This thing will automatically set it. Uh, you know, it's just really set and forget. And of course there are safeguards in place and all that. So today in this video, I'm gonna be showing you guys the two main re uh, uses that I get out of this Instant Pot, um, which is for pasteurization and sterilization. Pasteurization of dung and casing layer and the sterilization of grain. So hope you guys enjoy. Now I like to call the Instant Pot because of this, the Swiss Army Knife of Mycology, of home mycology at least, or amateur mycology. Uh, so the main settings that we're gonna be looking at is the pressure cook setting for the sterilization process and the keep warm setting for um, pasteurization. And with the pasteurization, we could do it for overnight pasteurization as well because to keep warm setting, we'll keep it at the perfect pasteurization temperature. Anywhere from around 156 to 160 is what the keep warm setting will keep the inside of your jar at. So first things first, let's get into sterilization with the Instant Pot. So uh, this is a six quart Instant Pot. This is a pretty old model. I know the newer models, you could get eight quarts right? And you could actually even get 15 PSI Instant Pots because this is the thing, an Instant Pot only goes up to 10 to 12 PSI. And what, uh, at least when I first started doing the Instant Pot, you know, there weren't channels like 90 Second Mycology or uh, a bunch of other channels that use the Instant Pot. Back then, it was like an untested thing, you know, so people are always saying, oh, you're going to contaminate. It's not going to be good enough for, for example, rye grain or oat or millet, which have endospores. But you know, I was like, well, well, let's give it a shot. And I started doing it and I didn't have any problems with it, right? And to really prove this, the reason I started this channel, just a fun fact, is because I had a grain jar that I made back in 2020. And I took a break from cultivating until the summer of 2022. And that's when I made this channel, right? And I was like, hey, you know what? This doesn't look contaminated at all. It's maybe just a little bit dry. You know, it was with micropore tape on the top with a hole, which was another no-no that people are like, oh, you shouldn't use micropore, you should go polyfill, you should go synthetic filter discs. And I didn't really understand. I was like, okay, well, let's let's do it simply. And um, it worked. I, I inoculated it and it, it grew just fine, spawned it to bulk, no problem at all, right? And that was sterilized with the Instant Pot. Two plus years of rye. The, that rye jar was fine for two plus years, just sitting in the kitchen cupboard. Okay, so that was done by Instant Pot, and that was to basically sort of prove to people that, yes, the Instant Pot works, right? It's it's a viable thing. So uh, nowadays, it's a lot more accepted, right? That the Instant Pot, like a lot of people do Instant Pot, it's not really a question. It's like, yeah, you can. So anyways, it works. And back to the, the size of the Instant Pot, with a six quart Instant Pot, right it seems like you could only fit one grain jar here's one right now right and if you put it like this with the trellis you can't close it you can't close it right but if you lay it down on its side then you could do that right but the thing is i have another technique and i will be showing you that on how to get two grain jars inside here two quart grain jars but before we get to that first make sure you got your seal in here Make sure your vent holes are unclogged, etc., etc. Just read the user manual, guys. It's for your own safety and there's not much to read. It's important to understand this stuff. So basically what you want to do now is you want to fill this up with, you want to have at least half a cup of water in here if you're going to be using the trellis, but we're not going to be using the trellis. So I will show you what to do. All right, everybody, I am back. So as you can see, I have taken out the trellis 
And I just put maybe like, maybe like two inches of water, maybe a little less. This is plenty. So, um, but before we go onwards, uh, I did say that we could fit two jars in here, but also it actually depends on the brand. So I can fit two of these Golden Harvest quart jars in here. So I'm just gonna put one in here just to show you because it's the closing part that's important. It's the vertical space. So here we go. no problem, right? I can close it fine. Now I'm gonna use a Bernardin uh, or however you pronounce it, jar, quart jar. And literally, if you look at it, side by side these two brands right you won't tell any difference it's like less than a millimeter difference but it makes all the difference because this guy oh actually i was able to fit it that's pretty cool but if i can't do two of them i can't do two of them side by side uh, i've tried numerous times i just can't so watch out with the jar it's just like right here this is how it's going to position right i can't close it now See, because if, if I were to put two jars, it would be side by side. It's like too high for the side. So with these jars, I cannot do that. But with the Golden Harvest jars, I can. So what I will do is I will fit them like this, side by side. There we go. And even with this, you might need to fidget around. And don't worry, because uh, you know, so the bottom is touching the, the, the bottom, right? It's close to the heating element, but the Instant Pot is made so that it disperses heat um, evenly. It's not like a stove. So you can't do this with a regular pressure cooker, but you can do this with an Instant Pot. So, and then I'll go close it like this. And I will be right back because it requires two hands. Hey guys, I am back. So, you know, it's you might have to move it around a little. Just as long as it's not blocking the release hole, then it's fine. So they're, they're positioned like this right now, one here, one there. And what you wanna do is put it on venting, right? Same with the pressure cooker. You wanna basically let it vent, uh, vent out steam for the first 10 minutes. So, and the reason for that is that uh, you wanna get out all the air inside here so you could just fill it up with steam because the steam is what's gonna sterilize it, not the, not the dry air. So we're gonna go in the pressure cook setting right here. And I'm going to, uh, I got a more setting. Yeah, so if I go to the more setting, then I got three hours, right? And make sure you turn off keep warm. Instant Pot will always automatically turn on the keep warm setting. You don't want the keep warm unless you're pasteurizing. So three hours, right? So I got the steam, uh, the, the vent, the valve open here, right, to venting. So that means that it will not get to the proper temperature on its own. So it's not gonna get to, you know, 10 PSI plus. Once the steam starts releasing, uh, you'll know because it'll make sound. Then set a timer for 10 minutes. After 10 minutes have passed, then close it. And then it'll get up to temperature and the sterilization process will truly begin. All right, everybody, I am back. And as you can see, it is steaming through here. So now I'm gonna set a timer and 10 minute, once 10 minutes pass, I'll come back to you guys. All right, everybody, so it's been steaming for 10 minutes now. So now we're gonna start the pressure cooking cycle. So we're gonna close this. Now you could just basically neglect it. Once it gets to the, the pressure inside, then it's gonna automatically turn on the three hour timer. And all you gotta do is just sit back and wait. All right, so once this thing turns off, then I'll t tell you guys how you should go about the next step. All right, see you guys soon. All right guys, so it didn't take long to get up to pressure. It took about two minutes. And so it started the cycle. See that? No steam coming out. Steam will never come out of this thing. And it's nice and silent. Hello everybody, I am back. Three hours have passed. It turned off on its own like it should. And as you can see though, the pressure is still up. So at this point, you don't wanna be messing around with the lid or anything like that. Be sure you remember that if this thing is up, that means there's pressure in there. Okay, so just let it cool down and avoid force releasing the pressure through the pressure valve because to rapidly remove the pressure, it can actually cause some stress fractures to your jars over time. Uh, so if you want to preserve the length of your jars, then just let it cool down naturally, uh, or at least let the pressure get out naturally. And then once the pressure goes down, then you could open it and take it, take it out. So once we get to that point, then I will move on to showing you guys how I pasteurize poo or any other nutritious substrate or the casing layers for certain species in an instant pot. All right, guys, BRB. All right, everybody, so it's been about an hour and the pressure float is now down. So we can safely open this thing. 
Doesn't mean that it's not gonna be hot anymore, right? It's still hot. There we go. And just drain the water a little bit here. And as you can see, water level is fine, completely fine. Looks like it hasn't lost any water. And here are the jars. So it's a little hot, so I'm gonna take a towel here and show you guys. There you go, All right? Completely fine. I'm gonna give this a good shake once it cools down. And I'm gonna take this other one as well. So now I'm gonna show you guys the next step of the process, which is pasteurization in an Instant Pot. All right, everybody, so let's get to the pasteurization part of the Instant Pot video. So basically, Instant Pot has a setting called the Keep Warm setting. This is all you need for pasteurization. As you can see, I have a, um, a meat thermometer here, and I got that meat thermometer stuck inside one of the jar, one of the two jars that I'm pasteurizing. By the way, these guys are poo, right? So I'm gonna do a 12 hour pasteurization uh, with the Instant Pot of the poo. So uh, with poo, 12 hours, but with casing layers, I go an hour and a half, okay? Now, if you don't have one of these, that's no problem because the Instant Pot will automatically maintain anywhere from 156 to 160 degrees Fahrenheit as long as you don't put the lid on. This is important. Don't put the lid on because it'll get higher then. Um, so just leave it open. Make sure the water doesn't run out. So I, I might put water in there maybe three times during the whole thing, but if you want to do it overnight, then it should last. Just put as much water as you can without it floating and it'll be okay. To keep the jars from floating, I like to put a little weight on them if I'm going to be putting a lot of water in there. And remember, you could do it for 12 hours, right? So. Here, I got it set. So this is the amount of time that's elapsed so far, okay? So this is the amount of time that's left. So we have 11 hours and four minutes left. Uh, it should turn back to the thing before, but uh, yeah, there we go. So 46 minutes is how long it's taken so far. And I have a time, I have with my meat thermometer, I'm gonna set the timer to start once I hit 142, because that's around 140. We're already at pasteurization temperature, but it goes back to 138, so. Uh, if you don't have a meat thermometer, then you could try to do it for maybe uh, 12 hours and 45 minutes or 12 hours, 30 minutes. Either way, it doesn't make much difference because you're doing it for so long anyways. Uh, so you don't need this, right? You don't need this, but it's nice to have just to get everything ready. And once I hit uh, 142, then I'm going to turn it off, right? Okay, we could basically assume that we've hit it, right? Because we're pretty close. So then we're gonna turn it back on, and now we're gonna start from 12 hours, from this point on. This isn't necessary. Obviously, as I said, you could uh, allocate for uh, the heating up time because you wanna start with cold water. Okay, so now it's starting, right? Because you wanna start with cold water, uh, you definitely don't wanna start with boiling water at least. At the very least, don't use boiling water because you want it to gradually get up to temp. And uh, yeah, so that's about it. So thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Ooh, there you go. All right, so now I'm gonna set this thing all the way up to uh, around 162. It never goes beyond 160 generally, but just in case, I just leave it on while it's pasteurizing just to make sure. And again, it rarely happens, but I don't want it to get to, for example, 167 or 165 maximum is the most I would go before I would start getting worried. It's never happened, but I just like to keep an eye on it just in case because I have randomly had it go to around 163. And remember, be sure to top up the water occasionally. Uh, so yeah, thanks for watching, guys. Michael File Sage, check it out.